at 2 o'clock on Tuesday? Is this the Ram Kid Show? Hello, everyone. Nice to see you. Uh, welcome to another exciting episode of the Ram Kid Show. Over the next sort of 30 minutes, we are going to talk about uh, the Royal Ontario Museum specifically, because guess what? This week on the 19th, the Ram celebrates 107 a years old. Imagine that 107th birthday for the Royal Ontario Museum. And to celebrate that, we have archivists from the Royal Ontario Museum, Charlotte Chafee on, returning to the show to take a dive into some celebrations the ROM has held over the last 107 years. And interestingly, for like a museum, like that's not that old. Um, so she'll be on and we're gonna dive through some celebrations throughout the ROM's history. We have some really cool photos to show you, including one photo from the very beginning of the ROM, which is very exciting and also really doesn't have the ROM in it. So it's like a curious sort of piece of ROM history right there. Then uh, as is tradition uh, at ROM Kids, whenever there's a big celebration or a birthday or like the ending of a program, we love to make slime. The slime sensation that's taken over, frankly, the entire world. Kids love it, I don't know why, uh, but certainly we will be making slime today and you too as well. Um, so just a reminder, my name is Kieran. I'm the host of the ROM Kids Show. I run the kids camps at the Royal Ontario Museum and this is our distance learning initiative, the ROM Kids Show. We'll have a special guest, we're gonna do an art project and we're gonna hang out with you for the next little bit. And I think with that, it is now time for the ROM Kids Show theme song portion of the event. Welcome to the Rom Kids Show with me. We'll do some crafts and tell some stories. Let's talk about science, art, and history. Welcome to the Rom Kids Show starring you and me. There we go. Theme song portion of the event out of the way. Time to move over to the art table where we can get ready to talk about slime uh, and talk about the ROM's history. So if you're into like niche history or if you're into the Royal Ontario Museum history, this is, um, this is the episode for you. Okay, so what do you need? You need, oh, let me just like pull up my notes because this is easier. You need four ounces of uh, white glue. All right, four ounces of white glue. Uh, this is the glue that we're using here. You need one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. Everyone loves baking soda, so Universal can do so many different things. You need one teaspoon of contact solution. So this is like really the only thing that you might have to struggle with to get. So you can always just pick it up uh, at your local store and do this next time. You need some food coloring. This will be my first time ever making blue slime. Uh, hyped for that. And then you need your mixing bowl and all your different various mixing things, okay? So grab that, and while you do that, it's time to introduce to the show, whoa, archivist Charlotte, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ron. This is Charlotte's second time on, uh, on the program. First time she was here, we talked about many uh, important women from ROM's history, so that was really cool. Charlotte's one of my favorite people from the museum. I think of her as like the ROM storyteller. She's like the ROM's historian. She knows so much about ROM history. And so I'm really excited to have her on today to dive into some of that. So before we get to that, um, what we're going to do is we are going to just do the first step of our uh, little sort of slime experiment. And that is by mixing in your food coloring into uh, your white glue, okay? So, you know, it's a great time to put in any color that you want. I'm doing blue right here. If you have glitter at home, you can throw some glitter into your slime. And again, we're doing slime on the birthday episode of the ROM Kids Show because at camp, we love to make uh, slime when it's important times to celebrate. So the first thing though, uh, we wanna talk about some big celebrations from ROM history. So we're gonna go back 107 years to this moment right here. This is the first, this is like the only picture we have from the opening of the ROM in 1914. Tell us a little bit about the opening of the ROM. Tell us a little bit about the beginnings of the museum. Yeah, so the museum, it was, uh, it started a bit before 1914. Uh, in 1912, it became a legal entity 
but the building wasn't really ready to be celebrated until 1914. And um, they were waiting for a really important visitor to come and help them open it. And that was the Duke of Connaught, who was the Governor General of Canada at the time. It was, uh, it was kind of a nice, a whole day of celebrations. They had different kinds of invitations. Some people got invited to come have a, a view of the gallery. Some people got to, invited to a, a fancy lunch. And then the Duke gave a speech and he was given a very special illuminated manuscript um, as, a, as a gift at the, the opening. And it was all very, um, very exciting for Toronto and exciting for the, for the museum that was officially opened. But the building had already been in use for a little while before that. Huh. Okay, so then, wait, when did... So there's almost like two birthdays for the ROM then, right? That's right. So what's the other birthday? So the ROM became a legal entity on April 16th, 1912 when the Ontario legislature, um, the act that formed the ROM received royal assent. Huh. So the ROM is, the ROM sometimes celebrates his birthday from 1912 and sometimes from 1914. And that's kind of, you know, enjoy, you get to enjoy uh, celebrating, you know, that's the wonderful thing about celebrations is that you can have them when there's uh, meaningful moments for you, right? So you can decide really at home if you want this to be the 100th and 7th birthday or the 109th. Um, I really like the 100th and 7th birthday just because like I remember ROM 100 uh, really <laughs> well, but we're going to get to that in a bit. What do you think it is about museums that make cities important or like are sort of like a cultural center? Because I remember, I, like I say, I remember Corelli said this, the first director, but I never met him. <laughs> um, Corelli was like, in order for us to have a world-class city, we need to have a world-class museum. What do you think is it about museums that do that? Well, ideally, museums are places that bring people together to, to learn together and to explore about nature, to explore about other cultures so that we can better understand the people who live in our city or the kinds of people who have have created our city um so i think it's great for for cities to have a museum that is a place where people can come and learn and that's great about like the rom now like maybe in the beginning it wasn't so open to all like diversity of people but now like oh kids everyone is welcome at the royal ontario museum okay now interestingly uh museum let's just say opens 1914 uh then in the uh the 1930s we had an extension to the museum. What happened there? That's right. When the museum first opened, it was just a small, a small part of what what's there now. Um, and they quickly ran out of space because there was so much collecting happening. Corelli was collecting. A lot of other, um, a lot of other folks were collecting important things, and they just ran out of space. So, in starting in 1931, they started building um, an extension. So. The first part, the first part of the ROM runs down Philosopher's Walk, and then in the 30s they built out to make the building shaped like an H. So the cross section, which is now the Corelli Gallery, and then the part that runs along Queens Park was built and was opened in 1933. And that was a really interesting project because it was happening um, during the Depression, um, which was a time of great, you know, unemployment and a lot of people didn't have a job. And it became a make work project for people in Ontario. And so the Ontario government supported the ROMs building this, but they had to use Ontario materials. So they had to use stone quarried in Ontario um, and they had to use workers. They had to get as many people working as possible. So instead of using machinery to dig the foundations and um, they, they had people digging with shovels by hand and they would rotate them. So everybody got a chance to, to work. So that's sort of an interesting aspect of the story. The only parts of the building that are not from Ontario is the mosaic glass ceiling. Um, so the glass came from Italy, but the people who installed it were um, living in Ontario and they were um, Italians who had immigrated. And so they had they had the, um, the training, the Italian training, and then they were able to apply that to, to, to put the ceiling into place, which was, it's pretty cool. I would argue that the rotunda ceiling is the, the most beautiful piece of art I think in Toronto. Uh, at the very least, it's the most beautiful thing at the museum. It's so cool. 
Uh, next time that we all get to be back at the museum, definitely check out the rotunda. This is gorgeous golden space. And during some sleepovers, I've slept underneath of it and that's been like a really cool experience. And being able to like <laughs> see the sunrise come in through uh, those doors and sort of light up that whole space is a really mesmerizing experience. I find it so interesting that such an important part of the ROM is this like make work project you were talking about um, and that, you know, people needed a job. And so one of the ways that we put people to work was to build a museum. <laughs> That's so cool. That's such a cool thing. Um, okay. The next thing is in our pre-interview, we were trying to, you were digging up like cool pictures. Um, and so we're going to fast forward uh, a number of decades here. And I want to show this picture of this kid right here with this guy. What's happening in this picture? So this, this kid was the two millionth visitor to the McLaughlin Planetarium in 1977. And he's standing with the, uh, I think the chief curator of the planetarium at the time. And he, um, he was given a lifetime, he and his family were given a lifetime um, pass to the theater of the stars. And um, so I think that might be a little disappointing for him now because he, <laughs> he can no longer go there. <laughs> you know, um, marking, keeping track of how many visitors we've had and, and celebrating when, you know, our one millionth and two millionth. And, and now we, we get, um, well, not now because we're closed, but, you know, before we closed, we were getting like, over a million visitors a year, which is so exciting. Yeah, like the, the ROM really is a place for like so many people to come. Um, for some of us, we might be a little bit too young to remember what the planetarium was. Can you remind us? Yeah, so the planetarium was a building or is a building, it's still there for now. It has a dome ceiling and inside they had a projector with two ends and they could rotate it. And it would project light onto the sea, onto the dome ceiling, and they would show um, to show the stars and constellations. And um, it was how we taught about space and uh, the planets and stuff for a while. It's and so it was a bit out of date, and <laughs> and they um, they closed it in 1995. And some folks who are probably my age will also remember they used to have like laser light shows and and uh, you know yeah <laughs> concerts and stuff in there to kind of bring more people in and appeal to uh, appeal to a broad range of, of visitors, um, which is, is pretty cool. And now most planetariums are digital. So the, the big projectors that rotate, they, they don't exist anymore. Um, but now what they can do with planetariums is so cool. I've not been in the, I've not been in the little planetarium that we have at the ROM. It's awesome. And, um, but you can do like, you can like travel through the stars now instead of just projecting them on the ceiling, which is really, so the the new the, the new planetarium is really cool. Like you can travel to Mars on that thing, and it can show you like all different sorts of constellations. But in sort of like the nostalgia theme of this show, which is like having some fond remembrance of things from the past. Um, I remember there was a Sharon Lois and Bram, uh, like uh, show that took place in the planetarium that I really enjoyed. Um, and also Sharon Lois and Bram, big connection to the ROM. They filled an episode of their show at the museum. Sharon Lois cool. and Bram, uh, the elephant show, was a popular show in like the uh, in the early '90s. So it's going to go right over the head of a lot of our reference, uh, a lot of our viewers. But uh, certainly, it was a big important part of my childhood. Next step for your slime is you're going to put one and a half tablespoons of baking soda right into your mix, and then um, I'm just going to like I'm sort of ballparking it here. Uh, Okay, so then uh, Planetarium was a really cool thing that happened, um, closed in the 90s, but something else happened in the 2000s that was really big. Oh, is it a tablespoon or a teaspoon? Let me check to make sure. It's a teaspoon, one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. Thanks everyone. Um, okay, something really big happened in the 2000s and I remember this as a kid, so I was a kid at camp and I remember like all the counselors and all the staff talking about this thing called Renaissance ROM. And it really, I, I didn't really understand what that was. But then as a, a counselor uh, and as a volunteer and as an assistant, as a teenager, I started working at the ROM at, during this time. And that was the creation of the crystal. What's going on with that? 
Yeah, so so we had, uh, talking back about the 30s, we had the H. And then in the 70s, they filled it in. On one side, we had the Curatorial Center, which is this big block kind of at the back, which most visitors don't see. Um, and then at the front, we had, they were terraces, right? So they sort of went down like that. But they, um, they aged. And again, the museum was sort of running out of gallery space. So um, Renaissance Wrong was a transformation of the gallery space of the museum. And that um, took out the terrace galleries and in went the crystal and the crystal, they started demolition for the crystal in 2002 and they opened it um, in 2007, in June of 2007. And this is the Daniel Liebskin um, pointy, pointy thing. And the other interesting thing about the crystal is that they moved the entrance from the rotunda, which we were talking about, the beautiful glass ceiling, they moved it around onto Bloor Street um, and in through sort of very modern, um, the modern entrance and they closed they closed the uh the rotunda entrance and so people were only going in and out of the blue street entrance for a while and then in 2017 i think it was am i jumping ahead no keep going keep going <laughs> we reopened the queen's park doors um and so now people can come in both entrances when when they're allowed to be open <laughs> i remember so i remember the night that the crystal opened i was i don't know 18 17 something like that and i was working that night and so when the crystal opened, we had like this big party and it was free at the ROM and people were allowed to explore the crystal without any objects in it. So if you can imagine like the dinosaur gallery or something like that, you know, go into your little mind palace and imagine the dinosaur gallery and then take out all the dinosaurs. It's just this big giant white space. And it was my first time and it felt like since I was a kid that I didn't know like, where I was in the ROM. It was so disorienting. But a little story is that, uh, these beautiful white walls were very, very quickly uh, covered in footsteps as people started to run up the sides of the walls because there were no barriers. Uh, there was this thought that people would sort of just like respect the space. Um, that didn't happen very quickly. So then we had to put up barriers. And so a lot of my first night in the crystal was telling people, hey, please don't run on the walls, uh, which is, you know, I think people a funny... Were funny way for me. They were excited and we're exploring. Oh yeah, it was all excitement because they had new uh, new museum spaces. Um, and, and figuring out where people might bonk their heads, I think is another thing that is quickly, yeah. quickly discovered. Yeah. Okay, the next thing you're going to do, because I actually just want to play with my slime so bad, is you're going to put one teaspoon of contact solution, all right? So I'm going to measure that out. One of the things that the crystal did though, right, Charlotte, is that it allowed us to put a lot more stuff on display. That's true. Yeah. Um, so that's fun. And so like, while I do miss the dioramas of some of the old spaces, it's cool about like just how much more stuff we can show people. Yeah, it was, it was a time when um, the way museums present stuff was really changing as well. So the, the dioramas were at the time of the crystals construction, dioramas were really out of favor in the museum world. Um, they're starting to come back though, which is also interesting. So it'll be interesting to see in the future as the ROM um, develops, if, if we get some dioramas back or not. I think some of the, some of the special exhibitions we've had have been more sort of diorama based, like Blue Whale, we had all that lovely blue mm. light. And... <laughs> Bloodsuckers, that was another really good one. I love those Bloodsuckers. dioramas. Um, yeah. Okay, then another thing happened, cause we're getting back to like the birthday-ness of mm -hmm. the ROM is a couple years ago, I guess seven years ago now, the ROM yeah. celebrated its 100th birthday. And we did something really cool for that too, right? We sure did. It was, was uh, that's when I started at the ROM. So I came in during ROM 100. So it was kind of exciting and also a little terrifying because um, people expected me to know things. Um, but we did all sorts of neat things. They had uh, a displays about the past 100 years, some of the first objects the ROM had were on display. The illuminated manuscript I mentioned earlier was on display and they digitized it. Um, we also had a weekend called ROM Revealed. That was quite fun. I remember um, that was a weekend where we had people come in and they were allowed to go behind the scenes and we did tours of the back of house areas, which is always exciting to show people because a lot of the work of the museum happens in the back, right? A lot of the the collection management and the research and the conservation labs. I remember I was, I was volunteering and I got to be near the conservation labs and that was really, really awesome. Uh, 
one, it's, I think what's so special about the ROM is that not only do we have like all these galleries with all these cool things on display for us to learn about, but we have scientists uh, and historians and archeologists and paleontologists and technicians that all work behind the scenes that continue to push forward this work. And so it was really quite exciting to be able to show those spaces off to the public that weekend. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so one thing that I've done is if you find that your slime after you put your contact solution in is too sticky, is you can put in some more baking soda. If you find that it's not sticky enough, you put in some more contact solution. And then eventually you'll start to get your slime to that correct consistency. Now I wanna show off one picture. I think this is one of the few times that we've had sort of the majority of the ROM staff all in one place. But this is a picture of ROM staff from our 100th, 100th birthday party. Uh, and it was really cool because we did a thing for the staff that allowed us all to like celebrate too, uh, which was a really, really fun initiative. I am right here. You can't really see me, but I am right sort of near the base of the Foodalonkosaurus in uh, Chen Court right there. Um, okay, now I want to do something that we've never done on this show before, okay? And we can do this because we have like the ROM historian, the ROM storyteller, uh, archivist Charlotte Chafee here with us. We're going to do a speed question round. Uh, okay. Okay, because we got a ROM expert here. So let's <laughs> ask some questions, okay? So question one, true or false, the tree on the corner of Bloor and Queens Park is older than the ROM. True. It is older, yes. So I don't think I have, like, a perfect image of it, but if you can imagine like right on that corner there, like sort of one of these trees over here, uh, it's older than the ROM itself. So that's, that's a really interesting one. Okay, true or false, the bricks that originally built the ROM were imported from another country. I'm gonna say false on that one. Yeah, false. And remember- Were they, were they from the Don Valley Brickworks? They were from the Don Valley Brickworks. Shout out to our friends at the Brickworks. We're big fans of them. <laughs> so uh, so if you ever in a day visit the Brickworks or if you're from the east side or from the Danforth and like you come to the ROM, you will have been at the place where the stuff that built the ROM came from. Okay, that was a good one. Uh, Phew. The, the true or false, the rotunda ceiling has real gold in it. Uh, true. True. Uh, and again, that was a make work project, really bringing uh, the city together to make this impressive, impressive um, piece of art. Okay, the rhinoceros in the biodiversity gallery, and this is an object-based question, mm. so I know that we're not as not as big on the object ones, but the rhino <laughs> in the biodiversity gallery is from the Toronto Zoo. True, I do know that one, yes. Uh, just another sort of connection between cultural uh, attractions in the city. We have the brickworks, and then we have the zoo working together with the ROM. Um, okay. The ROM has the large, true or false, the ROM has the largest collection of artifacts from China outside of China. That is true. That is true yes. too. Uh, we have some exceptional archeologists and scientists that work at the ROM as well uh, that do research and study those. Okay, this one is hard and if you don't get it, that's okay. Um, is what, uh, what does the ROM have the most of in its collections? Oh, that is hard. Um, is something like black flies or something? Because they're so teeny tiny. <laughs> there you go. It's uh, it's our it? ins it's our insect collection because there's so so many of them. And look at that Great. nice consistency to my slime right there. That's all. That's right. beautiful slime. Thank you. Oh, that that's good. That's good. Okay. Um, where was the Rom's first door? Where was the Rom's first entrance? Ah, it was off Bloor Street. So I mentioned that the first part of the building runs along Philosopher's Walk. And so it was off Bloor Street. And now it's a window. And I think there's a crane in the window. There's like a little statue. And now you can now you can get closer to the door because where the door used to be, because there's that lovely terrace that that new terrace. Yeah. yeah and like when things get like more uh, easy to go places, there's a really nice sort of garden right there. And it's like nice to have like a little a little snack and a little lunch. Okay, what's the largest thing in the ROMs collection? Oh, good question. Uh, 
It's the blue whale, isn't it? If it's not the blue whale, and I'm willing to give it the blue whale, it's the Futalocosaurus and Chen Kuo. I was, okay, that's bigger, okay. <laughs> so they're both really, really big. And let me tell you my grand dream for the ROM and what I would love to see happen in the next hundred years is the Futalonchosaurus and Chenkor, then we have the Quetzalcoatlus, the largest flying thing, and then I would love to see the blue whale just sort of diving in there too. So the largest water animal, largest land animal, largest flying animal. That's my dream. That's a free tip. If, you, if any kid is in the audience and wants to run the ROM one day, you get that one for free. It's a great idea. Um, okay, the ROM was established in 1912. We talked about yes. that earlier, sort of like it was established and then it was actually like built, uh, put on for people to come into in 1914. The ROM was established in 1912. What famous historical event overshadowed this news? That was the, the, the sinking of the Titanic. The yeah. sinking of the Titanic. So if you want to know like where we are in history, Lots of big things happening sort of at the turn of the last millennium. Um, okay, this is a fun one. Okay, this is a really okay. fun one. Um, I'm ready. What gallery did the ROM's security cat, yes, the ROM had a security cat named Roma uh, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. was used for pest patrol. What gallery did the ROM, ROM security cat use as a litter box in the 1960s? <laughs> in the 60s? Oh, you've stumped me. I thought Roma was earlier. Um, I don't know. I'm going to guess like gems and minerals or something like that. Oh, okay. So what it was, and this is why we ultimately no longer have a security cat as the ROM, is back <laughs> in the old like prehistoric gallery, the old dinosaur gallery, there is some diorama with sand. Oh, the dioramas. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so what, what place does a, a cat going to use as a litter box? going to be a place with... The, with with the litter in it. Um, okay, and then final question from our speed round uh, with Archivist Charlotte. Uh, true or false, the ROM is haunted? <laughs> Depends. I mean, that's, <laughs> you asked. That's the right. You, it's true. <laughs> to, to me, it very much is true. And if I get. I know there are definitely ghost stories. I think from that's, the wrong that's the best area. way to put it. There are definitely ghost stories. Um, <laughs> uh, at the Royal Ontario Museum. Charlotte, this was awesome. Thanks for joining us again on the Rom Kids Show. It was fun. It was fun. Happy birthday, Rom. Happy birthday, Rom. And here we our go. second COVID birthday. Yeah, this is our... <laughs> well put. Um, this We made some slime on the show today. <laughs> we learned about a whole bunch of different celebrations that have taken place uh, at the Rom. And it's 107 years of existing truly a very special uh fun part um of rom history uh i particularly like speed round uh with charlotte where we got to go through a bunch of different um uh rom facts that was really cool uh hopefully we're celebrating the birthday a little bit differently next year hope so um but with that said everyone thank you for joining us we'll see you next week uh, we have Burton on, uh, Burton Lim on, uh, mammalogist at the ROM to talk all about bats and to answer all your bat-related questions. Uh, other than that, the show will be up on YouTube later this week. And that's it. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. We love you. Wear a mask. And we'll see you next time. Happy birthday, ROM! <laughs> Bye. Bye.